Hi, I'm Zach. Uh, we are going to be going over 3D printing and vapor bath exposure to smooth out 3D printing models to make them look a little bit less like 3D printing things and a little bit more like uh, injection molding or something like that. Um, to do that, we ended up using this jar on this bed. The whole principle around vapor bath smoothing is that you want to saturate an environment, but not with liquid. So that's why it's called a vapor bath instead of a normal, just like bath. So to do that, what we ended up doing was taking the hot plate of the Lulzbot Taz 6 and heating it up a lot with all of this inside. What is this? This is actually limonene instead of your standard acetone vapor bath. We chose to do this obviously because we don't like working with acetone and prefer to work with limonene. Instead of using normal ABS plastic to print with, we had to use HIPS. Um, there's a lot of kind of differences between the two. But the nice thing about HIPS is it's kind of a hybrid in between ABS and PLA. Uh, so it's a little stronger, but it's also not quite as durable, but you don't have to use acetone to dissolve the whole thing. So what we did is ended up taking um, chicken wire and putting it in as a platform to set whatever we wanted to vapor bath smooth on and then just heated the bed up, created kind of a saturated vapor environment, and then submerged the octopus on that platform for about half an hour. Um, unfortunately, it's not really a total science because we ended up just kind of monitoring it rather than exposing it for a certain amount of time. So it's really kind of something you're gonna have to be a little bit more involved with instead of just leaving it for a set amount of time. So to monitor the temperature or to set the temperature, you have to go up here into the temperature setting of this, go down to bed and increase it. We did about 120 degrees and that worked just fine. And it'll take probably half an hour to get warm enough to be able to do the entire um, saturation process. Keep in mind that whenever you lift off the lid, some of that vapor gets exposed. Um, in addition to just using the jar, we did have kind of a vacuum area so that we weren't just breathing in the fumes. But the nice thing about limonene is it's made from orange rinds instead of acetone. Um, so it's very organic and friendly and non-toxic instead of typical acetone. This right here is the level that the limonene is sitting at. And as you can see, the octopus is actually sitting above that liquid line. Make sure that you use pure grade limonene rather than something that has limonene in it because it's so much more concentrated. So what we're gonna do is just leave this here and see what happens from there. Okay, so here's the actual end result difference between a normal 3D printed model and something that has been exposed to a vapor bath. As you can kind of see on the sides here, you really get that almost topographical look to a classic 3D printing model, which some people love. And actually, it does look really good on a lot of parts that you want texture on. But if you wanna make something that's almost toy production worthy, or something that just looks a little bit glossier um, or pretty, then you want to submerge it in the vapor bath. As you can see, all of those topographical features almost completely disappear. Really, on this part, the only place that you can see that is on the very, very top when those are actually really apparent features and it's still even just this most subtle thing ever. Um, like I said, we had exposed this one to about a half an hour of a vapor bath, but what happens if you overexpose it is this creature. And this thing, as you can see, almost completely dissolved. And that's actually how we kind of came up with the idea of using a limonene vapor bath versus an acetone vapor bath, because when you have two extruders, you can actually print with ABS and HIPS material and then submerge it in limonene and dissolve all of that limonene HIPS solution out. So it's a really nice way of using support structures with a not super high-tech 3D printer. Um, you can even just do that with the Lulzbot Taz 6 if you have the two extruders. But back to this, as you can see, all of the shell has nearly dissolved and is starting to collapse in on the octopus itself. And you can even see on the legs how flexible and, and kind of ruined they are because we overexposed this hips material to the limonene for just a bit too long. So be really careful when you're monitoring. 
A couple pointers and tips and tricks to this. Don't overexpose it, number one. But number two is watch out for it being sticky at the end. All of the forums that I've read never mention the fact that it's sticky. We actually ruined a couple of these because I went in to grab it with my fingers and ended up with fingerprints on the side because it's super, super tacky. The best part I would suggest is to get a very well ventilated thing. Like I was talking about our vacuum setup is having some sort of air pulling system over here. So you can just take off the lid and pull all of that vapor away, turn off the bed and just leave it for literally like two or three hours. And what you'll end up doing is letting all of the air pretty much cure all of that vaporized and essentially melted material away. And then it ends up being really smooth to the touch. If you don't do that, you'll end up getting really fine surface defects, kind of like this right here. Um, and that's just something to watch out for. Another thing you wanna consider is adjusting your shelf thickness because when you increase your shelf thickness, you prevent this kind of collapse and dissolving of that external shell. So on this one, for example, I ended up doing four times the diameter of the nozzle thickness that is on the printers. Um, that's just kind of what I would recommend. I think that the default for Lulzbot is uh, three times the thickness. So there's just a little bit more wiggle room um, for dissolving in that vapor bath. Like I said before, we also used a lot of uh, ventilation for this, not because limonene is bad for you, but just we wanted to kind of err on the side of caution. Um, additionally, a nice thing about using hips is it is a lot less carcinogenic than ABS. So it's kind of an added bonus. Instead of using carcinogenic ABS and acetone to do this, you can use less carcinogenic hips and limonene, which is a super big bonus for us at least. Again, just a quick recap, um, and obviously these are just suggestions. If you find out cooler things or better methodology, feel free to let us know and we'd love to try to redo this. Um, we recommend heating your bed up to about 120 degrees. Get a nice big glass or metal jar. We like glass because we can see into it without removing the lid. Um, do some sort of kind of observation deck for your part. Don't actually put it in the liquid, otherwise you'll just completely dissolve it. And like we said, we recommend using limonene and hips rather than acetone and ABS. Obviously, again, just our preferences, but feel free to try whatever works best for you. If you have a ton of acetone laying around, knock yourselves out, <laughs> but don't. <laughs> to see more content like this, please subscribe to our page and we'll be doing a lot more stuff like this. See you next time.